But anyway, that does mean that I have finished this sigil campaign and unlocked that wonderful brand new spotty dragon. Hello, hello. So, today we are going to be finishing off the current sigil campaign map and unlocking the spotty dragon. And not just this, we'll also be hatching the divine Aphrodite dragon, because that's just been sitting in my hatchery for ages. And we'll be hatching a new dragon. But... First of all, we do actually have to get this sigil battle done. And uh, you'll notice that this is being done on my Android account. And that's because I actually missed two days worth of resets on my PC account because I just did not log in for two days um, during this previous or this current um, sigil map period. So that's sort of my fault. Um, but it does mean that people that have been wanting to see sort of where the Android progress is, you can sort of see what I'm working with. And... Um, it's the same concept as what I normally go with for winning the sigil map fights, except instead of having Purity Daredevil, because I do have Nezha from really early on on this account, which is fantastic for me. So I actually use Acceptance on my Harpy Dragon, who I'm still using. So I kind of wanted to see, you know, with, for all these things in game, you know, we're always told use Legendaries, use Divines, use Ancients, and obviously they're still the better option. But since I already use those all the time, is it possible to just do most, or if not, literally everything in game with, you know, one or two divines and just an epic for the sake of it? Um, because even I get bored of all the super OP ancients and divines and, you know, following the meta. I, I just like using dragons that I like. That's the reason I still use my autumn dragon. So whenever I tell people what the better strategies are, it's not because I'm saying, you know, you can't use dragons that you like, but I'm saying it because it is just the better strat that you can go with. Why not use better dragons if they're available? Because if you're going to play the game for many years, like I have since 2015, uh, you see that the game sometimes requires legendaries and things like that. And now we've got the ruins update. Where you need to have legendaries or above for a lot of the ruins at max level. So sometimes just using epics, the game actually disincentivizes it for a lot of reasons. But if you're like me, and uh, obviously this is my second account, well technically third, but if you just don't care, do whatever the heck you want, and you can pretty much achieve everything in game with any dragon that you want. But at the same time, it is still an epic dragon. I'm not using commons. I'm sorry, Lord Ceremony. Please do forgive me for my sins. But, you know, acceptance plus wonder, even on an epic, super duper good. And again, I've been doing most of the map battle fights before I started hiring using Purity Daredevil. Because it is just a really good combo as well. But if you don't have Purity Daredevil, and they've actually frightened me here, so I can't heal or anything... But if you can't use Purity Daredevil or say it's not good for that situation, Wanda plus Acceptance and say Purity or a couple of other sigils also works. But anyway, that does mean that I have finished this sigil campaign and unlocked that wonderful brand new Spotty Dragon. So um, again, it's so weird that he's called Spotty and yet he's not actually Spotty. He's, he's just sort of like smoshed in paint. I don't know, it's like someone just threw paint buckets on him, so it's kind of weird. But either way, that is the Sigil campaign map done on this account. And uh, god, I'm going to have to watch an ad just to have a look at him in my inventory. Otherwise, I'm being completely free to play on this account. But there he is sitting next to the Mountain Dragon, so we'll get him hatched soon enough. So now that the map is done, that does mean that we can get to hatching our dragons. And first of all, I did want to hatch the full bounty dragon because we got him from the Dragon's Delight event. Super, super easy and casual for that round. The lovely full bounty dragon show up in droves during the harvest season, eager to help farmers with their crops, carve faces into pumpkins, stomp on grapes, and eat as much as they can get away with. So in general, just a sort of little joyous dragon that does whatever the heck it wants. And... Being a plant, fire, and shadow dragon, that's a really interesting set of elements to have on an epic. And especially if we were talking pre-sigils, that would be a pretty OP combo. Like, obviously you got shadow and light, which are pretty good. But having plant on a dragon always used to be super OP. And uh, fire is just good if you want to clear out fights. But, you know, things are slightly different now in the age of sigils. 
but at the end of the day, it's a new dragon, and at least we got it on one of our accounts, because I would have been sort of upset if I didn't get him on either. He's cute. He's cute, and he's literally got grapes hanging from his head. That would be so convenient if you're hungry. Just eat your own grapes. You know? Actually, would that be cannibalism? Maybe I'm looking too deep into this. What do you think, Elmar? Elmar doesn't speak. And back to the land of PC DML once again. We have Aphrodite to hatch, which um, I already have an Aphrodite, but look at that, she's got a big love heart on her egg. You ever seen that before? That's cute. Um, main bonus for hatching Aphrodite is basically for the um, Dragon Master points, and that's about it. Um, but since I don't actually have anywhere to put her, she's just going to get thrown into the Dragon Vault for now, along with our entire collection of... Uh, Legendaries and a couple of other divines, little Garva. Um, but, you know, with Aphrodite, it was very lucky that we managed to breed another one. Um, again, there was no real reason for me to try and go for it apart from to do it. Um, you'll see I do that quite a lot. <laughs> but anyway, Aphrodite being a water, fire, and divine, I wouldn't say her elements have ever really been the best. Um, you can use her, but compared to some of the other divines out there, it's just sort of like, eh. She's sort of a healer, but she's sort of not, and it just sort of... I don't know, she's been really meh for many, many moons now. Um, I have also been involving myself in the Blitz breeding for Fall. Um, because again, why not? But I haven't been successful in that front yet. Uh, we do have Sigil map fights to do on here as well, but first let's actually do a... Uh, Ruin collecting, because I am in fact level 2 now, which means that now we need 2300 XP until our next level up, and I believe it's been calculated now, and I did take a look at it myself, that for us to get to level 11 ruins, it's predicted to take around about a year, and that's not logging in every 6 hours on the dot, that's giving quite a lot of leeway, so... Technically, within the sort of next year time frame, we should expect to be seeing people at max level ruins. Of course, that's only going to be true for people that have 18 dragons that are uh, epic or legendary or above and are around about level 70 plus. So if you've got 18 dragons at level 70 plus, you'll be fine. If you don't, you're probably going to start struggling with the ruins at one point or another. Um... But something to keep in mind at least. So I guess we'll throw a dragon in here for now. Let's throw you in there. And then we've got our six hour time skip with Kronos. Might as well use it. Might as well because that means that we can collect more from the ruins again. So for anyone that does have Kronos available. You're going to get a lot more XP overall in the ruins obviously. Um, if you don't have the six hour time skip for Kronos and reduce to every two days. Obviously it's going to take a lot longer. But um, I'm glad that we get some other sort of value out of the runes in a sense that, you know, having things to level up isn't always such a bad thing. I don't mind having it, but it's just the fact that it's going to cost so much extra food. And I believe it's going to cost about 3 billion food if, say, we went from, we worked from zero or we were a newer player and we were trying to get all of these ruins up to um, max level. To be able to do all the hard explorations, I do believe it would cost around 3 billion food. Maybe even more than that. Um, so that's the sort of absurd levels of food cost we're looking at, just to be able to explore in level max level, level 11 ruins, which if we hit that in the next year, it's not even that long away, considering all the things that we've been through in DML. And, you know, I've got 76 million food at the moment. I would love to use that on, you know, an actual ancient metal dragon that comes along. But... <sighs> Apparently they don't want us to be able to do that, and they want us to waste all of our food on collections or other random stuff that doesn't actually matter. <sighs> I know, it's all getting very strange and complicated in a sense. It's just, I don't understand why we keep having things added to the game that just require us to basically waste all of our currency. It doesn't make any sense to me. 
Like, why? Why would a person just want to waste all of their food when we know that more ancients and more other special dragons are going to end up coming out? Why would a person just waste all of it on ruins? Before, it used to be level 30 and people used to complain. So what was the thing? Ah, yes. Let's make it 75 plus. Like, I don't get the lot of throughput there, but... Hey, I, I guess that's just what we have to deal with. Another thing I don't really understand is why the game continues to crash. And again, I'll keep leaving this in until it actually gets patched, because I've been experiencing it obviously on Android as well, because we got the new update on there, and now every single Sigil map fight pretty much crashes, apart from some. Because randomly, some fights won't kick you out. A grand majority for me did kick me out, but then others just... they just didn't. So anyone wanna theory craft as to the reason why we're getting kicked out of some fights but not others? It's like, um, before I just did the last two fights on Android and it didn't kick me out. Why? I'm just confused more than anything else. Like, I just, I'm just looking for some consistency, you know, and I'm, I don't feel like I'm getting that at the moment. So, anyway, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's just very, very annoying how you'll win a fight and then everything just crashes and then you got to full restart the game again. I guess you could argue, well, it doesn't take that long. But this is the sort of thing that makes me not want to keep playing the Sigil map. If it's this broken, why would I want to keep doing it? Ah, good lord. It's like, I shouldn't have to full restart the game after every single battle. Um. <sighs> Another one of those bugs in DML that makes me question my existence sometimes. But, you know... Again, I'm still not really struggling with these Sigil map fights, and uh, it would be even easier. It would be so much easier to deal with these fights if um, Ikez actually had his legendary Sigils. But we're not that lucky yet. Um, and by legendary, I literally just mean if he has two rares. Um, but he doesn't have that right now. But I just kind of want to see how much damage these dragons do because when you go against a set of enemies that don't have damaging sigils, the reason that the fights seem so easy is because they just genuinely don't do a lot of damage. Like you'll see these enemies when they attack me here, they don't actually do a whole lot. So rather than trying to finish this fight super quickly, I want to at least see them attack a couple more times, but like... Although they'll keep missing. I mean, I'm, there's only so long that I'm going to give you extra time to attack me, enemies. But, like, when a dragon doesn't have really high damaging sigils, the fights are just super easy to deal with if you have any sort of defensive dragon. And, like, even with me having Daredevil Purity, obviously my health goes down every attack. But they don't really do anything to me. I just find it really odd how they sort of just throw the more air quotes difficult sigil fights with like the random super high damage sigils just in the middle of the map even though it's pretty obvious that there's certain fights that are much more difficult than others and yet they're right at the end of the map i guess my point is i don't feel like the sigil map's actually balanced correctly and anyway we've come up to one of the fights that i was actually interested in talking about in this very concept because you know how I just said that um, I kind of wanted to see how much dragons do when they don't have a damage sigil? This is a perfect example of that because every other fight, pretty much, you know, we can go with a double daredevil purity teams. I talked about this yesterday. This may be one of the few fights where I would um, actually prefer to use the acceptance combo because when you use Wonder Acceptance, plus Wonder got buffed a lot, which means we're going to get a lot of bonus HP. But it means that these dragons, they just have really high evasion but not a lot of damage. I mean, we've got an uncommon uh, witchcraft, which could um, be troublesome. But if that was a higher tier witchcraft, I would genuinely rather go with my acceptance dragons. Because you see, I've got these dragons with Purity Daredevil, Purity Daredevil, and then Wanda and just any sort of sigil that helps out Nezha. But I do also have Free that has Havoc Acceptance, then we've got Sany with Havoc Acceptance, and then we've got Hermes with Acceptance and Witchcraft, and they're all rares, and they gain a lot of HP, and they're really good for sustain battles, and this is a sustain fight. But just because I kind of want to test out 
exactly how much damage these dragons do to us without having really high damage sigils. I'm just going to use this team comp. Again, this is not the optimal team comp for this sort of battle, purely because evasion, legendary, is a 78% chance to dodge almost all incoming damage. And when you've got a team that's really glass cannony, like my one here, you're going to find that um, a lot of the times, a lot of the time, you're going to take a lot of damage. But these dragons here, at the moment, with how the sigil map is balanced, you see they've got one legendary or one epic and a, like a mid-tier one, but then the ones with legendary either have no other sigils or they've got like a common sigil. So even though this isn't the best team comp for dealing with this sort of thing, this still works out because at the moment it's still quite easily doable. The time when this is going to become a problem is going to be if the sigils on the enemy start becoming two legendaries or a legendary plus an epic or even legendary plus rare might start posing a little bit of an issue. But that's the point where you'll want to start considering whether it's worth it to use acceptance instead. The main reason I don't is purely because I don't want to have to pay to change over all of the um, trinkets all the time. Because it's really difficult to get enough trinkets to actually change around sigils on your team comp. And so, I would much rather use dragons that don't have the fully optimal set of sigils rather than have to switch sigils all the time. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are in that boat. I don't think it should cost anything to swap sigils on your dragons. It's just another unnecessary costing thing in game, which I don't think should be there. Because it doesn't make sense that we've got all of these things that cost gems and all these other things that cost um, other trinkets and then these all, all these other currencies. Why did we have to have sigil trinkets on top of everything else? And the whole point of the sigil map is that you're supposed to use different strategies, but you can't use different strategies if it costs a lot to change through all of your sigils all the time. But, you know, it's still doable for now. Again, even with a technically suboptimal team, you can still do things in game. Again, I know that it's not ideal all the time, and most people are in a less than ideal situation in terms of the sigils that they have available. Of course that's true because it's completely luck based as to what you get out of the premium sigil chests. And it's all RNG on RNG on lots of overly charged trinket stupid things. So I don't think the sigil map is bad. I just think that the implementation of the sigil map has um, been the issue. The actual implementation and the way that it works right now is the problem. I don't see why we couldn't have the sigil map exactly the way that it is now, with exactly the same RNG drop rates, but just allow people to change their sigils whenever they want at no cost. Because if they're using bad sigil combinations, then they're going to fail the fights, which means it's going to take longer for them to do the map anyway. They're already getting some sort of deficit. You don't want to punish people for trying out new things and then they don't finish a fight and then they feel even worse and then they'll just never bother and just take the sigils off completely. So a lot of people have done that. I don't know. I guess I'm just not over my sigil ranting. I probably should be, but um, I just think there's a lot that really needs to be done in terms of how sigils have been implemented. Again, I'm not struggling with the map fights. I'm actually struggling doing the map fights. Like, I got a one star on that, even though, like, nobody took any damage. That's what I get for not getting perfect hits. <laughs> yeah, I don't go for perfect hits because I'm just too lazy to do it most of the time, but... You know, I just wish that the sigil map was just different. You know, I can hope for things, whether it's going to happen, that's another story for another day, but... I can hope and pray, right? Anyway, for now... Um, I'm planning on potentially doing some testing for sigils, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough trinkets to do that. Because, um, again, I did mention it before, uh, but Wonder Exceptions got a major buff of, as of this update. I'm not sure if it's fully intentional, and I'm not sure if it's going to stay here forever, but it does mean that Wonder Acceptance is pretty good. Better than it was before, which was already one of the only two viable, really, combinations that you could use, but... Anyway, 
But for now, that is me done. I'm glad that we got a full bounty. Um, we got some more points because I have not been doing Dragon Master Pass at all either. You'll see that I've been quite lax on my Windows account. I've just been trying to chill between the major events. Like boss challenge, not doing it. Bottomless dungeon, not bothering this week. Breeding Blitz, eh, I'll try it every now and then, but... I'm not going to sweat too much because we've got the Halloween events coming, so um, it'll be time to start freaking out again then. But for now, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, I hope to see you then.